As we kick off October, a lot of us here want to jam in as much horror as we can consume from TV shows, movies, video games, whatever we can get our hands on over the next 31 days. So grab your headset, turn down the lights, and throw on the best headphones you can find, because these are the top 10 scariest games on PSVR 2. There was a lot of competition for the lower spots on this list, mostly because there's a lot of creepy games on PSVR 2 that aren't exactly super scary. Overdark is one of those games, but I'd argue it nails the unnerving feeling better than most of the games that ended up in the honorable mentions. I do wish it was even scarier, but even as is, you'll be looking over your shoulder while wandering around the semi-realistic environment solving puzzles and making sure not to move when the monster sees you. Very Bad Dreams comes to us from the makers of Darkness Roller Coaster, and while it's still very much an indie title made by two people, they've stepped up their game considerably. There's some action sequences, stealth-like sequences, and some sequences that are just downright disturbing. In fact, the developers have shoved so much into this one that if you're scared of it, it's probably in here somewhere. Spiders, dead bodies, undead bodies, and the cacophony of non-stop twisted scenarios. Meaning, you should definitely check this one out if you like indie horror, and you can deal with a little jank. The developers over at CM Games don't even consider it into the radius a horror game. And I mean, I guess they're right, it is a single player extraction shooter. But the horror setting here kept me on edge constantly. The contaminated zone doesn't play by any physical rules you'd expect, with train tracks ripped out of the ground, gravity malfunctioning, anomalies pulsating all around you, and enemies that flicker like they're not quite there. It doesn't help that because of the extended manual reload system, you always feel vulnerable, making Into the Radius feel scary for all sorts of reasons. There were a surprising number of haunted house experiences on PSVR 1, but only affected the manner did the genre justice. Luckily, when it was brought over to PSVR 2, not only did developer Fallen Planet up the graphical fidelity, but they also remixed the experience completely, with new paths to take, new scares, and even a couple of new game modes where you explore new parts of the manor. They almost never miss an opportunity to make you jump, with bats crashing through windows, furniture flying across the room, demonic children, all of which is exactly what you'd want from this kind of experience. Being trapped inside a kid's pizza joint with possessed animatronics is way scarier than the recent Five Nights at Freddy's movie would have you believe. And for a minimum wage nighttime security job, you've got way more responsibilities here than you'd expect, all manifesting as mini games that you're going to want to throw your friends into. Surviving until morning isn't going to be easy though, and if you screw up, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Balloon Boy, or one of their many friends will kill you with an absolutely terrifying jump scare. A lot of people hate this. I love it. As the spiritual successor to Dreadhalls, we were expecting great things from Cosmodread, and I think it's safe to say that the super small dev team over at White Door Games delivered. It's interesting how something like the addition of having two hands in the game, now needed to open doors, puts you on edge so much, especially on your first few runs. Sure, you're doing the typical stuff, finding audio logs, crafting, hunting down key cards, but there are enemies here that will stalk you relentlessly if you don't kill them, giving Cosmodread some real survival horror vibes with always way less ammo, oxygen, and inventory slots than you'd need. The Exorcist Legion VR puts you in the role of a Boston police detective investigating a series of crimes, and these are some seriously disturbing crimes. Other than an exorcism kit you find during your first investigation, you're unarmed and pretty vulnerable to the demonic presences you encounter. As someone who grew up in the Catholic Church, this is the kind of stuff I was warned not to fuck around with from an early age. Demons, possessions, Satan. Which is probably why so much of Legion VR shook me to my core. Before we get into our top three, we need to hand out a few participation ribbons, honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. Like Organ Quarter, that I debated long and hard about whether this Silent Hill inspired horror game deserved to be on the list more than Overdark or Very Bad Dreams, which honestly, maybe it does. Or Doctor Who Edge of Time, which has quite a few creepy moments, making an otherwise average puzzle game way more intriguing. Then there's Happy Funland that goes off the Until Dawn Rush of Blood rails and lets you explore an entire haunted amusement park. And Afterlife VR that 
sets the tone well, locking you into a not quite abandoned insane asylum. All these games are fun and deserve a mention on this list, but didn't quite have enough scares to make the final cut. Don't get too close. We don't know if they're infected. Zombie games have never been that scary to me, but that's why Propagation Paradise Hotel was such a surprise. You're locked inside a hotel, and the hallways of this place are soaked in blood, and littered with seemingly endless numbers of incapacitated zombies that could spring to life at any moment, making it terrifying just to walk along the creaking floorboards. Plus, the limited ammo and limited flashlight batteries don't help anything. All the typical horror tropes make an appearance here, and I don't mean that pejoratively. The developers didn't hold back at all with this one, making it one of the most fun, but also one of the most terrifying games in VR. Shit. I'm sure a lot of people expected PSVR 2 launch title Resident Evil Village to be number one here but I have to say that Village goes for long stretches without being all that scary. But when it does lean into horror, it leans far. And these are some of the most memorable parts of the game. I think we can all agree that from the moment you step inside the House of Beneviento is the same moment you realize that Capcom isn't pulling any punches. It's confusing and suspenseful, gruesome, terrifying. It ranks up there with some of Resident Evil 7's scariest moments, but it's not just Beneviento. Beyond that, there are some good jump scares, terrifying boss fights, and the whole game oozes atmosphere. Is Village the best game on this list? <laughs> yeah, probably. But is it the scariest? Not even close. Orcs among us. Orcs among us. Orcs among us. Among us. The lead up to Madison VR's launch was filled with some of the most hyperbolic marketing I think I've ever seen, or so I thought. From the minute you start Madison VR, you're drenched in the blackest shadows, least lit hallways, and creepiest ambience that VR has ever seen. Staring down a pitch black hallway, unarmed, unsure of what's hiding in the darkness, with the split second flash of a Polaroid camera being the only way to illuminate the unknown is beyond terrifying, and that's just the first five minutes. Madison never holds back. The suspense builds and builds. The jump scares are constantly changing and well-earned and frequent. And this haunted house goes from bad to worse the further you get into the game. The photorealistic environments and great storytelling only serve to immerse you further and further into this terrifying experience, leaving you with not only an awesome game, but one of the scariest I've ever played. I really wanted to kick off October by sharing this list with you, but also knowing full well that by the time October is over, we'll be playing Phasmophobia and the Arizona Sunshine Remake. And then soon after, we'll be getting a whole new batch of horror games in the form of Affected the Asylum, Numata, Alien Rogue Incursion, and Slender the Arrival, all hitting PSVR 2 within the next few months. Which thankfully means there's no end in sight for VR horror. 